Good morning. Welcome to Pine View Baptist Church. Are you glad to be here this morning? I am too. Many of you rode past a lot of churches to get here, and there are a lot of good churches between here and your house, I'm sure, and we're thankful that you joined us here this morning. Uh, as you can see, Wayne's not here this morning. Wayne and Stephanie are out taking a little vacation time, and hopefully they're getting rested up and relaxed. And Wayne always makes a point to tell me while he's gone that at the exact time the service starts, he and Stephanie are praying for us, praying for me as we lead and this choir and for us. So I just tell you that, so if you would, just reciprocate and just, just pray for them as they're on their vacation for for rest and relaxation and that they come back charged up and, and ready to go. Y'all ready to sing something this morning? Let's stand up if you would. Hymn 757. Soon and very soon we're going to see the king. All three verses. <coughs> soon and very soon we are going to see the king. You know that's going to happen one day, folks, sooner than we think, probably. We're looking for him coming. We are glad to see each and every one of you here today. And if you're visiting with us today and you've never filled out a visitor's card with us, would you please slip up your hand for just a second, hold it there, and let these men get to you. Please fill that card out and drop it in the offering plate that we might have a record of your visit with us here today. Let me uh, encourage you to come on Tuesday morning for our 10 o'clock prayer time, Wednesday night. Uh, we had a great time this past week. I, it looked like homecoming back there with all the food and pastries and uh, different things. And we had a great time. We appreciate everyone uh, helping with that. But this week we're going to feed on the Word of God. So you come. I'll be, uh, uh, Brother uh, Lee Day is going to be speaking for us Wednesday night and singing also. And uh, Lee will bless your heart as you already know. So let me encourage you to come and be a part of that. Let's bow our heads together now for prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we do thank you and praise you for the privilege of being able to gather here in the house of God. Lord, we thank you for every person who's walked through these doors today. And Lord, I pray that they are here for no other reason but to worship you. And Father, as we fellowship around this communion table today, Lord, Father, may we remember afresh and anew what you did for us on Calvary. Lord, may we never, ever be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And Father, I pray today that for those that are sick, those that are shut in, that, Lord, you might touch them and minister to them as only you can do. Father, for those who have lost loved ones in recent days, that, Lord, you just lift them up and cradle them, Lord, and love them through this very dark time in their life. And, Lord, I pray for the men and women who serve in our military today around the world. Would you bless them? I pray for our missionaries, wherever they are today, Father. Would you take care of them also and meet their needs? And, Lord, we ask you to bless our choir, our congregation, all that will participate here this morning, Lord, let's just lift our voices in praise to you. And all of this we ask in the wonderful name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Brother Keith. Amen. Are you washed in the blood today? This is one of my favorite old hymns. Stand with us if you would. Hymn number 330. Let's sing the first, second, and the fourth verses. Are you washed in the blood? Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? 
Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless, are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you walking daily by the Savior's side? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do you rest each moment in the crucified? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless, are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Lay aside the garments that are stained with sin And be washed in the blood of the Lamb There's a fountain flowing for the soul unclean Oh, be washed in the blood of the Lamb Are you washed in the blood of In the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb Are your garments spotless, are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Be not dismayed, what is be tight God will take care of you beneath his wings of love abide God will take care of you God will take care of you through every day or all the way he will take care of you God will take care of you through days of toil when heart doth fail God will take care of you. When dangers fierce your path assail, God will take care of you. God will take care of you. Through every day or all the way, He will take care of you. God will take care of you. All you may need, He will provide. God will take care of you. Nothing you ask will be denied. God will take care of you. Sing it with me, church. God will take care of you. Through every day or all the way, He will take care of you. God will take care of you. God will take care of you.
That is so true. No matter where we go, what happens, God is there to take care of us. And we need to praise His holy name for that. If you have your Bibles this morning, turn to 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter. And let's begin with verse number 23. 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, verses 23. The title of my message is Preparation for the Lord's Supper. Preparation for the Lord's Supper. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take eat, this is my body which was broken for you. For this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, and when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink of this cup, ye do show of the Lord's death till he comes. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, so that let him eat of that bread, and drink of that cup, that he eateth and drinketh not unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause are many weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if ye were, would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we should judge, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world." Wherefore, my brethren, come ye together to eat and tarry one with another. May God add his blessings upon the reading of his word. May we pray together. Our Heavenly Father, if it please you this morning, would you permit us to share this message with our people. Lord, may the Holy Spirit have absolute charge here of everything that we do and say. In Jesus' name, amen. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup, of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, so let him eat this bread and drink of this cup. Now we've gathered about this morning to uh, remember the Lord's Supper, his broken body, his shed blood. It's a time of soul searching, a time of self-examination to prepare our hearts for the uh, experience that, and I, I'm, I make three suggestions against the background of the first Lord's Supper. First of all, it's based on John 13, the first seven verses. Let therefore be a spirit of humility among us. He said, now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father. Having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. And the supper being ended, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things to his hand, that he would come from the Father and went to God. He rises from supper, lay aside his garments, and took a towel, and girded himself and began to wash the disciples' feet. Now, folks, here is humility exemplified. Humility is an act of the will. You and I have to make up our mind that we're going to be humble. We are, we're going to, to seek God's uh, will and way for our life, that we don't have to be number one. We don't have to be at the head of the line. Humility as we remember what God has done for us. Then he tells us when Christ had finished that simple but impressive action, he said, If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given unto you an example that you should do as I have done unto you. Now, folks, if we have that, that spirit of Jesus, we will be willing to submit ourselves to one another in love and serve one another. And what better preparation for, for the Lord's Supper than this? And if anyone who uh, you are not willing to serve, let's put that aside this morning. Let's put away our pride and allow Jesus Christ to give us that servant spirit, that we come humbly before the throne of God. For we have to remember, folks, we can't save ourselves. Never could, never will, and it just won't happen. Jesus Christ, Gave of himself that you and I could have life eternal in Jesus Christ. Now, let there be no alien spirits among us. 
Judas was not present uh, for the Lord's Supper. It illustrates for us that, that alien spirit, he, he left the upper room to portray Jesus and according to the scriptures in Matthew 26 20, uh, through 25 describes the exposure of the betrayer. And John 13, 21 describes the same events and the fact that Satan had entered into him. And Jesus having, uh, Judas having received the, the sup immediately went out. But folks, he left before the institution of the Lord's Supper. And this doesn't mean that those who do, did observe the Lord's Supper were without flaw, for they weren't. We know that they were, they're men just like you and I. They, they were boasting and trying to seek who could be the first in the kingdom, who could sit closest to the throne of God. And Jesus rebuked all of that. There should be no, no need for you and I to seek who can be the greatest. Jesus Christ died for every one of us. Folks, being the pastor of this church, being a preacher of the gospel, does not make me any more worthy than you. It doesn't make me get any, need to get any closer to the throne of God than you do. We're all equal in the sight of God. Jesus Christ died for every man, woman, boy, and girl. And the only way we get to heaven is the blood-washed way of Jesus Christ. There should, uh, should be no disobedient uh, spirit toward God. No walls between us and others. And, and the true spirit should be one identified with Jesus' death. And, and we need to e examine ourselves this morning for that spirituality that there's no alien spirits among us. And then let there be a spirit of love among us. The, the, the heart of Jesus was filled with love. John 13, 1 says, Having loved his own which were in this world, he loved them unto the end. He also commanded his followers to love. He said, A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another, and by this shall all men know that you are my disciples. And if you have loved one another, God will bless Love is, is, was a sign of being a disciple of Jesus Christ. Uh, we cannot properly observe the Lord's Supper if we do not have love one for another. And, and folks, that means loving people sometimes who are unlovable. It means loving some people sometimes that just don't love you and I. Amen. But we have to love them anyway. We don't have to like what they do. But we have to love their soul. Because Jesus Christ loves them. E.A. Johnson, the former secretary of the Navy, told a, a lesson that his father had taught him regarding love. He said, one day I came home crying because another child had taken my bicycle and gave me a thorough whipping. When I got home, I told my dad about this, and he said, well, let's go down there. We're going to teach this boy a lesson. That sounded great to me. And we went back, and, and dad asked the fellow, said, did you take my son's bicycle? The boy admitted that he had. He said, in that case, we're going to teach you a lesson today. We're going to forgive you. And then you're going, we're going to love you. Now that will teach you a lesson. The little boy said, Dad seemed to have flipped his lid. I wanted to see blood. I want, instead, I saw a love coming down from him. Not until I got to be a grown man. Did I understand the lesson in the power of love? Amen, folks. We need to teach other to love. We need to have that forgiving spirit and forgive. Our Heavenly Father forgave us. There's not a one of us sitting here today that's not a recipient of the blessings of the forgiveness of God. Every one of us. And we have no reason to get high-hatted. We don't need to re get holier and holier than thou because the Word of God says they were all as filthy rags in the sight of God. We've just been saved by the grace of God. Amen. And we need to remember that. And we need to have that forgiving spirit in our hearts. Now, in serving the Lord's Supper, it's essential that we show humility, we follow fellowship without alienation, and the love of Jesus in us for others. And when we do that, folks, we're beginning to eat the bread and drink the cup of God worthily. With every head bowed and every eye closed, as the musicians play, I always give you time to humble ourselves, 
and ask God to forgive us and cleanse us of any sins in our heart. And really mean it, folks. Because this is serious business up here. We're not just drinking a little cup of juice and eating a little piece of bread. But we're remembering what Jesus Christ did for us on Calvary. A fresh and anew that he died for our sins. That he sits now at the right hand of the Father to make intercession for us. So with every head bowed and every eye closed. And every Christian for just a moment praying. And then I'll close it out in just a moment. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you that we have this opportunity, Lord, to partake of these elements on this table, to remember afresh and anew what you did for us on Calvary, that, Lord, you saved our soul. You washed our hearts in the blood of Jesus Christ and cleansed us and established our going. And, Lord, I pray today that we'll have love one for another, that, Lord, we won't have that alien spirit that we want to alienate ourselves or anyone else from the gospel of Jesus Christ. That, Lord, you forgive us of all of our sins. Lord, if there's anything in our hearts and lives today that would hinder us from being unworthy to come around this table, would you please forgive? Put it in that seal of forgetfulness never to be remembered again. Thank you for what you're doing in Jesus' name. Amen. We ask our deacons, you would, to come forward, please. As we come to observe the Lord's Supper, it's said on that night that he celebrated the memory of the broken body and the shed blood. It's said on the night before he was betrayed at the conclusion of the feast of the Passover, which he and the disciples celebrated, they took the bread and having blessed it, gave it to the disciples and said, This is my body which was given for you. This bread which came down of heaven, not as the Father ate and died, he did eat of this bread, shall live forever. And on that same night, the Lord took the cup, and having blessed it, gave his disciples and said, This is my blood which was shed for you. And according to the law, I almost say that all things are cleansed with blood, and apart from the shedding of blood, there's no remission for sin. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have one fellowship, one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. As you often as eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he shall come. After the Lord and his disciples had ate the bread and drank the wine, celebrating the first Lord's Supper, it is said they sang a hymn and went out. May we stand together and sing, Blessed Be the Tide. Mm -hmm.